The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman on this Monday, the Oct October the 9th, and we're looking at uh, the Dow down 60 at 33,349, I must say. <clears throat> For my subscribers to my opening call every weekend, I do about an hour-long overview, go through our stock positions, what we're looking at, what I'd like to buy, what we didn't buy, what moved without us. Uh, what we have in terms of uh, new positions, et cetera, et cetera. And what we're looking to buy in just in relationship to maybe adding to positions that we already have. And it had just been often news about the uh, Israel uh, attack uh, on Israel. And I, I treated this with respect to, I mean, respect in the sense that it was something that for market-wise, because that's really what I was doing market-wise. But I want you to look at the market as if what would happen if the selling pressure that we've seen, a pretty intense selling pressure for the S&P was July, July for the uh, Dow was August the 1st at 35,679. Uh, what if the selling pressure just lightened up a little bit? What would happen? So with that context, look what we've got. I'll do this in the daily chart right here. I discussed the symmetry between the August 1st high in the Dow and the low of May the 25th at 32,586. And basically what I'd said is there was a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside, etc. But we've got, we got that turnaround and based on really a lot of emphasis on one particular technique, although I used others, with the RSI, the retro strength is gray line declining before we got to the top on August the 1st. But within that context, there was a, a very good sign that on a short-term basis, the Dow would turn down, but that nine period exponential moving average was still strong but there were hints that it could turn around based on some of the te technical indicators that I follow. So within that movement to the arch right here, where you're always looking at patterns of an arch and a cup, there's the arch, he has a V or cup formation, there's another V or a cup, in this case a beautiful cup formation, and there's an arch. Uh, within that context, what we were looking at is that the cell signal generated uh, later on with that big 500-point spike, I think it was, back about the 5th or so of August, and then it failed the same day and then went lower, and then soon afterwards, on the 15th of August, that's when it says 15 days, it's 15, not 15 sessions, but 15 days later, calendar days, that's where we turned down. And that's where the 9 period moving average turned down. And what I was suggesting is that within that context, the art formation, this H that goes to an M, lowercase M, M pattern that creates a larger arch formation, should see a break of the uh, 34,000 level, which it did. And if that was broken and that two, orange 200 period moving average, the pink uh, orangey line, gets taken out decisively, there's a chance that we could have symmetry between May the 25th, the low of 32,500s, the high of 35,600s, August the 1st, well, that's the day we actually went short, and this low coming in right here on the 6th of June, that was Friday. Well, within that context, um, what we were looking at is there was a low that was made at 32,846, was just a little bit above the low that was made on May the, uh, no, June the 1st of 32,700. Oh four, so um, that that was the low. That was the first low. Well, so far it's held, and the nine the uh, inside wedge, Chapman wave inside wedge dash pink support line hasn't been taken out. So this move right now is possibly the start of something. 
And we'll get into that as soon as I can go to Garo in Newport Beach. Garo, how are you? How are you, sir? I'm very good. Good. You'd <laughs> like to look at? Uh, I'm looking for a square SQ. If, it's, if you have the time, I need your opinion um, um, regarding the daily, daily chart. Uh, this has the second dot from the bottom. Yep, and it's showing some strength here. Is this your idea? Just your idea. Is this going all the way up to twenty-one day to around forty-seven dollars, or this is uh, I'm just hovering down here? It's going to it's going to hover uh, down and again yeah, go lower. Yeah, I, I think this is uh, still yeah. this is still in the basing area. Um, it's had a very nice move. It's down for uh, sixty-eight cents today. Uh, at 43.16, we were looking for some kind of test of the 40, maybe 39 area. What did it actually get to? It got to uh, 40.77. Nice green bar on Thursday, a very nice green bar on Friday. And today it's stalling a little bit. If I look at the weekly chart, this weekly chart says it is preparing an attempt at a rally to the 45, 44, 45 area. But I think, do um, you have any position at this particular point? No, sir. I'm short. Today I shorted it, and uh, I'm just looking at it. I'm in profit. Um, I, I may get out a, a little bit later or uh, so on. Uh, but no, nothing at this time. Uh, my okay. positions are very short. In the, 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 the longest that I wait is about 15, 20 minutes, sir. Okay, with, it, with that said, let's just go to the 10-minute uh, uh, chart right now because I, I agree with you. That's why I was stalling to say I don't see much on the upside. So let's go to SQ, which is square, which is actually block. They changed their name. So you are short. If you are short, then what you want to see is trading at 43.24 right now. You can see that the 10-minute went right to the 200-period exponential moving average. And that was peak. Let me just check. Where, yeah, this is a brand new buy mode. So this is A, B, C, uh, D, E, F. Yeah, so this made a top at about 8 o'clock this morning. Then it crossed negative. And, oh, that's not 8 o'clock this morning. That was uh, on Friday. Uh, mm -hmm. in the right. day. So now what we're looking at, I, I just be a little careful because it's trying to show a little bit of strength and the selling has been intense. My thinking is on the very short term, and that's the only reason why I saw it, saw it, because I see in the very short term there's an attempt to move higher, but I don't see it as a big move up. I, I, I just think it's an attempt to move higher. So I'd be a little careful because right now it's trading at uh, 43.28. Uh, the, the stochastic is very good at 89%, and that just says that there's good support, and it's got 43.21 as support. I, I kind of like what I'm seeing right now for a bounce, and I think 43.57 is the 200-period moving average in the one-minute chart of square, and I don't know if it's going to get there, but it will get there if it's able to close in any three minutes, three minutes of a one-minute bar holding over 43.40, and then all of a sudden, I think that's in play. But right now, it's got a little bit more strength than weakness. But um, I don't think this is the big move to the upside in the longer term. But yeah, I hope that helps you. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank Bye you. Bye. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities. Subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, everybody. We're back. So on the way to our uh, overview, I also want to just tell you um, that I'm going to go to a couple of questions and that on the way because uh, I might forget them. And it's my, I, I did this on Friday. I had written it down because I keep getting asked by a number of people, is it time to buy Eli Lilly? And uh, on Friday during my show, I wasn't going to do it for my subscribers because we were looking at some other things completely in different areas. I forgot to say, this is the time for a trade, not the big long-term buy, but at least for a trade that could allow you to hold it much longer than normal to buy it. And it would have been around about the 5.52 because it already just moved out because it gapped up higher by the 10 o'clock time I got into my show. And I completely forgot about it until I was looking at it um, last night, I think. I said, oh, no, did you forget to try? I'm almost sure I forgot to talk about it, Lily. I might have, but I got a feeling I forgot it. So now it's got an even bigger move uh, than I expected today. It's up 11 at 5.76. And it was at 5, I, I believe at about uh, my show, it was maybe at 5.50. This is 25 points. I mean, 25 points about, it's a, you know, what, about 3, 2, 3%. So from the low, so the, yes, I like this. And I, it's my, I, my apologies. I, I know that uh, if, you'd, if I'd seen you, put something in the den because it was a really important session because I was expecting that there could be a turnaround. We got the turnaround. I was able to add for subscribers to some of our long positions. Um, so I was really busy, but wow, that was silly. And why was it silly? Because at the five, at about even 552 level, what I was saying is I would have a five point stop, which is a 1%. That's nothing for a $552 stock. Because if this was the move that was the oversold move that I was anticipating could happen in this environment, Eli Lilly we're looking at, large pharma, with really fantastic products online, especially, I guess, a diet one, um, or weight loss, I should call it. Um, and here it is. So now, it's, I, I'm sorry, because if you get in now, you've lost that risk reward that I was really looking forward to for some, for the people that were asking me. So it's a little different. So I'm going to say you've got to use less if you're getting in now. Because it's a $574 stock, 
this is not like when when I have these streamers under ten dollars and all that you can hop in and hop out. I don't think you really want to be hopping in and hopping out of this. So this is what I'm going to recommend. Uh, we don't know if the turnaround on Friday, and I have to go into that, and I'll do that in a moment. But I want to spend a moment on this because it was asked enough of me uh, by uh, quite a few people. I'm going to say uh, you've lost the opportunity because I would have said start a small trading position. Now I'm going to have to say make it a half or even a little bit less than the trading position. But I would start the position here. But now you've got that risk reward because if the general market, let's just say this is real. This is this is absolutely obscene optimism right now because you've got – Second war potential right here with almost everybody else involved. Um, what are you thinking about going long? Well, you know, the market sometimes, if you look historically, market sometimes fights um, its own battle and and actually moves up during a period of, of, of strife when it comes to war. Um, that's more the bigger picture of what happens in war, but in the shorter term, if there's a sell off the end of the day, and instead of being uh, looking at uh, the Dow up uh, down 50, let's call it 60, and there's to be down 13, we double that to the downside. That's going to be a problem, and that will drag Eli Lilly down. So I, I've lost for you, I've lost that impetus that we would have had if we were in early on Friday, where I could be looking in and say, okay, now just raise your stuff. How easy would have that been? Well, it's not there. So now it's a little difficult. So I'm going to say out of the position you would have started, I'd only put a third to work right now. And let's give it two or three days because if it holds the days lower, 563, that's 10 points lower, by Wednesday, then it's saying, hey, fund managers are looking at this as counter to anything else that's going on in the market. So start your position, but it has to be small. In fact, I'm not going to tell you how much to do. Think it through and say you've lost your biggest uh, – your littlest risk reward now it's somewhat bigger but it does look really good the fact that for two days it's actually for four days it's got green candles that money's going in says that this is what people want even though it's extremely i wouldn't say overbought um on the daily because it's had a bit of a pullback and even the weekly but the, the monthly chart says it's acting extremely well but this is pretty much a vertical move at least for the last five six months hope we got that out the way Next question came in. Did I just hear a thing? Yep, I did. I've got uh, Bill in Montana. Uh, Bill, how are you? Great, Basil. Good. I got Good. a general question for you. Uh, and uh, as an example, I'm looking at Bank of America. Yes, BAC. Okay. And I, for example, it's. In, when looking at the downward move, it went from 50 to 30. Yes. And then did a more or less 3A2 up to 38. Correct. And so if you're looking for a support l uh, level perhaps down below now in an ABCD, do you use the $20 from 50 to 30 or do you use the 40% and – would look at 40% down from 38 or $20 down from in general in in terms of your uh, trying to you know gauge where the support might okay. come in in a in a chart like that that's a, that's a very good question because i spent quite some time over the last i'd say five or six market days Really looking at Bank of America, I've spoken about it before. I've said this is one that we over the years we've had it and we've held it, held it for months and months. And then as it topped out, we'd get out and we'd wait for a big, big pullback, get it and do it again. I haven't done it for a long time. But what I did, I just want to give you a little perspective of why so far I'm avoiding it. I'll get you on to try to answer your question in a moment. Is that and we got a, a more online bank on Friday. Um, not quite at the level that I wanted, but lower than the high of the day, which is good. And I'm watching it closely today, and it's acting way better. Look, uh, Bank of America is down 1%, uh, down 27 cents at 25.8. And the one that we got is down uh, 0.12, but it is within a penny of what we paid for it on Friday. So I'm... I, I want you to put it into perspective that I think in the financial area, and this is really important in the phase that we're in right now, 
the XLF and really needs to move. And I think that they are kind of stuck. We'll see what JP Morgan does on Friday and some of the other banks. But you can see this 200 period exponential moving average in the weekly chart of the XLF. It's like a magnet. It refuses to let the price go much higher because it keeps coming back. And it even doesn't let it go much lower because it keeps coming back to the 3283 level. Bank of America, let's go to you. So what I like to look at, and I'm sure you've heard before, I look at a pattern that I call the dreaded H. It's the lowercase h. Uh, we just have to move something away. There it is. So it looks like a lowercase h, and you can see a, a whole bunch of them. Here is Bank of America from the 50.11 high of back in, I think it was February, January, February, in the weekly chart, and it, ran, it came straight down for 50.11 down to the slow of about 39, and then ran up and then failed at the H pattern and took it out, and it keeps doing that. Now it's making the H to M pattern. I'll be back because I think it's a really good question. Bank of America finally makes its turn to the upside. I think all the financials will be helped. I'll be back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Bill in Montana. So, Bill, I'm in, in a peripheral way, I know what you're looking at is you're looking at the measured move from a particular point A to a particular point B, and then it rallies, and then you're looking for the next move down C to D. Am I correct? Yeah. It's, it's, okay. uh, you know, percentages or points, I guess I'm 
I've sort of felt like on serious declines, points can become not feasible even, you know. So yes. I kind of I kind of drift toward percentages on declines and points going uh, on going up. Okay, I, you see, if you use that and it works for you, I say just stay with it because it's a methodology that you're consistent in. But this is what I'm really looking at. So the pattern that I was talking about is both a pattern, but within the Chapman Wave methodology, back in the, the practice days when he, when he was talking about uh, uh, Elliott Wave and everywhere you went, CNBC, wh whatever medium you were looking at, people started to talk about Elliott Wave. It's a, it's a very, for people who understand it, it's very helpful, but there are a lot of alternate counts. I said, I don't want anything to do with Elliott Wave. I've got something very different, although I know a couple of people use Elliott Wave and say, wow, in the Chapman Wave, it very often turns out that you get the result in a much simpler way. But anyway, with that said, I look at just counting each successively high peak and label them A, B, C, D on the way down, and it can go E, F, and G, but on the way down, I use lowercase, and it's the same thing. So it's a very simple, I didn't want to mix it up with Elliott Wave, which uses numbers and numerals, so mine's alphabet. Okay, now we've got that out of the way. What I am looking at is if you look at the weekly chart of Bank of, of America, there's a down channel. And that's why this particular week is so important, because when you get the arch formation, and there was an arch, yet another arch formation in the weekly chart, um, the acceleration down of the last few bars, it takes out the left side low, in this case, the 27.68 low of uh, end of March, beginning of February, uh, April. Um, we, we got that, and we had an ugly candle yet on last week. So today is kind of important to establish some kind of a base. But I, the measured move for me, and I'm going to blow this up right now. I shouldn't use the term blow this up in this particular environment. So I'm just going to, I'm going to expand the chart right here. And there's a technique that I call the propeller shaft. First of all, there's the big rectangle, the long, long, narrow rectangle that just lasts a lot longer than your patience. And it's been in there. Now, I don't know if you can see my chart. I'm going to do this. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to move away the background of the rectangle. I'll just grab it and move it to the side, move it down. And you can see I've got a pattern here that looks like an oval. And what I do there is the one-to-one -one that I like to use. Is I call it the propeller shaft. It's uh, using somewhat different uh, technique, but the result should be more or less the same. I do it as conservatively as possible. So I go the straight line move. In this case, I've gone with one, two, three, four, four bars, four weekly bars. I go click, and I got this measured move, and it takes me to the high. And then I see where does it go to. And you can see that it goes down. It's this particular, the only time I'm using it right now is for this move that went from the, the candle, the doji candle of the week of the 28th of July in Bank of America, down to the low of the 25th of August at 28.18, then to the high. Not this high. I want to be as conservative as possible, so I'll go to the high over here on the 15th of September, 29.44, and the measured move takes me to just about 24.89, so it's a dollar lower, but that also says, who. If it does break that level this week, and it needs to be this week, <clears throat> there's a chance that this declining, and I'm going to do this, I'll make this green. I like to always have these colors. I came to this because I'm a very visual person. There it is. So you can see this, what I call it, in, an inside track propellant zone. And this is, would be my target. If, if Bank of America doesn't rally in the next two days, from 2590 uh, to about 2635 in the next day or two and takes out Friday's low, then I'm looking at sometime this week, the green line will start the support level and that'll be at 2442. And if it takes that out, then I'm looking at this whole channel, which has been, I could even do a, a a symmetry, bar symmetry, yeah, but I don't really want to interfere with this. I like it as it is. And it says if Bank of America is weak in the next two days, 
you've got to be careful because this whole area between just over 24 and just uh, above 23 is going to be absolutely imperative to hold. That's the move that I like. So that's the one-to-one, -one, a little different to your usual, what you hear from most of the hosts here at TFNN who use their own technique very favorably. They use the, the lightning bolt, you know, that pattern. I've got it slightly yeah. different. So this is the way I'm looking at it. If it's if it if it close certainly if it closes under last week's low of 2547, then I'm looking at this particular little mini channel right here. I don't know if that helps you, but that's kind of the way I'd be looking at this right now. And the reason only reason why I decided to avoid Bank of America for quite some time is something's wrong with the chart. It's got um, it's got the um, Merrill part of it, which is the brokerage, and if you know, if you look at Schwab, they, they their chart doesn't look anywhere bad, as bad as this. So there's something quite not quite right with Bank of America, and that's why I've avoided. But I don't know if you're looking at it to buy, but if you are, these are the techniques that I would use. Well, no, I'm I, I'm uh, it, it's to me it it it, it could it, it could even possibly get to 18. I, I'm not but, disagreeing uh, with you at all. I, I don't know about 18 in this particular move, but certainly if that no, whole 23 no, I mean, area yeah, fails. No, over many months. But uh, Yeah, because it's not. It's making I, low I highs. 23, uh, 23, 20, uh, about to, to be intermediate support. Um, oh, I, I can't disagree with you. It's making lower lows and lower highs in the monthly chart, and that's what you look at for a trend. So, yeah. So we're we're on the same page there. But are you asking me about the one to one? I'd first do that. Yeah, no, that's great and stuff, th Basil. Thank you. Uh, th you have a thank great you. day. Good question. Thank you very much, Bill. I appreciate it. Call again. So, folks, now you've got the Dow down 91. The S&P is down 14. This early morning surge to the upside is the reason why I said to my subscribers, hey, are we going to raise stops? We're going to take have tight stops. We're going to take off. Oh. Um, so Garo, uh, Garo, that price did go high. It went right to the 200. I think I mentioned the 200 period moving average of 43.54. It hit it exactly that square. Now, if you are still short, and you said 20 minutes, so you're probably out. Now's the time that you could start to see a retest. If the general market stays weak, square could go all the way back to 42.98. Hope that helps you, Gary, if you're still listening. Okay. So this is what I want you to do. I didn't go through all the different indices. Let's just run this again. Here's the Dow. Oh, it's a break. I'll do it real quickly. Oh, can't do the Dow on the one-minute chart. I want you to have a nice big look at this. So we've got a break coming up. And I'm going to go, as we go out, I'm showing you the Dow. So I can give back some of the early gains. Got repels of the pink nine-period moving average. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. See you in a few. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. 
Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, so on the way to go to uh, all the different indices, uh, I got a question. I had spoken about this Wednesday of last week. I said, I, I, someone had asked me about UNG. I said, start your position right now. I wouldn't get a full position, but I'd start a little, a little position. And it's gone from the uh, six, I think it was around about 690. It's trading at 786. This is UNG, United States National Gas Fund. I haven't done drawn in the. Um, I think I did it in natural gas uh, continuous contract. Oh, typed it in the wrong place. Sorry. Let me put it over here. <clears throat> NG. Oh, I didn't even do that. So yes. So UNG. Uh, this is a very nice move. I said it's going towards this candle. I wasn't sure it was going to fill the gap. Well, not only did it fill the gap, it went to 793 today. The high that we're looking at is 815. What was it? 8, 808. That's right. 808 on the 9th of uh, August. So it's getting towards in this beautiful cup formation. Remember, I'm all about cups and arches, cups and arches, straight line, cups and arches is a straight line mixed with the cup. Now, what we're looking at is how does it hold? going into Wednesday, Thursday. That's going to be important because I have been saying for a long time, the rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patient. Remember, I've had webinars based on narrow rectangles and large rectangles. And what I was looking at is this particular pattern with the trading band says if there is a push above 808 and a close above that, you've broken this resistance. Now you can start to the left side, which takes you all the way to 10. And that Seasonality-wise, this is this is kind of where I would ex I would expect that natural gas. So this is a very nice. I missed it for subscribers. So subscribers, you spoke about it. I just didn't feel I wanted to chase it, and that's what you, you had to be in it to enjoy it without any risk. Uh, that is gap down or gap up risk in the morning. It's doing very well. If this week on a weekly basis it can close above 808. That's going to be really important. A question came in here. Uh, Mike in Ormond Beach. Mike, how are you? Haven't heard from you from a little, for a little while. Are you good? Yeah, I've been pretty busy, Basil. Basil, I'm, I've got the ultimate question for you. Do you Ooh. think the low that we had on when, last Wednesday at 42.35 in the futures, do you think that is A low or D low? And what would make you make make the determination um, either way? So that, that's a question, of course, uh, not only you, but a lot of people have been asking themselves as well as me and other hosts. I think that this is going to be very important. I, for me, it's just a low. I don't think it's the low, not at this particular time. Does that mean, so I'm treating it as if it's perhaps an internal low that needs a residual low to confirm it. But in the meantime, I'll tell you what I'm looking at. The, the fact that the S&P right now is only down 14 after that, I mean, the news over the weekend, the fact that crude oil did spike immediately, gold spiked immediately, and then they kind of stalled. 
is telling me that this is a process and the process itself is the most important thing. So when I, I get uh, questions about, um, for instance, we have Kevin over the months and months has been talking about starting position and then adding to the position on a dip and then waiting, waiting. And I've been saying for this other position, which I'd also treat as a, two, a, a, a split position, I wouldn't go all in on the next uh, move down. I'd still split it. I'm waiting for, I've got eight, a series of lows that have been trying to form. But the I want to see, to get the next big low like we did in October or uh, just a really decent low, I want to see the VIX close at least one day up in the 23 to 24 area. And intraday, mm -hmm. it, I, I would like to see 20. I wouldn't even be surprised if the news is so bad that it goes to 38 or 37. And then I'm starting to look at it and say, wow, I'm getting really close to such an oversold condition that we're looking at a rally that if it turns around, doesn't last a week or two, we're talking months. I haven't got that yet. I think that's your question. And that's my answer. Yeah, so basically we, we need to see another panic low, see yes. a big, big spike in a VIX and uh, I prefer before you're totally convinced. And I'd prefer that it didn't happen under the conditions that we saw last week, where we saw decent bounces almost every day and then a sharp sell-off. Um, I prefer just week, week, week until everybody just, uh, e even people expecting a low and wanting a low say, oh, I can't stand this anymore. If it doesn't happen now, I, I'm done. And that's when you're going to get your low. And that's where the VIX has to be. I prefer a Friday or a Monday. You remember I said, down on a Friday, we've done that before. We did that back in March of 2000 when we went long, uh, 2009, I'm sorry. But And then it was Monday for the S&P. This is the reverse. This is, this is Wednesday on the S&P, Friday on the Dow. I think we are attempting to form some kind of a tradable rally, but I don't have this. This is, for me, not the big one, no. Yeah, and fr Friday's bounce. I mean, in the past, I have seen huge bear market bounces also. So, I'm kind, I'm, I'm, with agreeing with your thinking, and I'm thinking that you know Friday was just a big oversold, uh, short covering bounce. Well, and if we didn't have the news, come. if we didn't have the news on Saturday, I think we would have followed through on the upside, and that would have met many of the conditions. You remember, I also have the Dow chart where on the 6th of, of October was exactly the time sequence and bar symmetry from the left side to the right. And that said, whoa, that's a good day to have a really good turnaround. And we got that turnaround. So um, all I'm saying is that many of con the conditions were met, but I'm also at the same time kind of impressed. The day is young, but I'm impressed that we aren't down 500 points right now based on all the news. And that crude oil isn't up five dollars, and gold isn't up at least thirty-eight to forty-two dollars. It could still happen. The day's young, but so far it says uh, what's going on now is in the not in the economic purview that deals with the market in the United States at this particular moment. I think that's the only way I can assess it. It is uh, emotionally and in every other way something you just say, "Wow." How can the how can the market rally against this backdrop? Well, only reason why it's holding is it got very oversold and it needs to work that off in some way. So I hope that answers your question. Yes, it did, Basil. Thanks for everything you do for us. Thank you very much for calling. Always appreciate it, Mike. So, folks, let me just do this because I know we're going to run out of time. I've already got a bunch of things. Let me. I've got the daily chart up. Look at the gold. And as I say, gold is. I mean, the days, the week is young. We just barely begun. So it's gapped up, and it's holding. It's still holding. It's up 18. That's not nothing to to say. Whoa, what's the big deal? It's a big deal because we've we've covered one, two, three, four, five. We've gone to the fifth trading day from last week in one one foul swoop. So I'm thinking, look, GDX. These are the gold stocks. We spoke about this the other day. I said I like the fact that the GDX, the gold stocks, are rallying, and gold in a way is lagging. And that the move on Friday, you remember we're talking about, so for Bill, here's another way that I look at the one-to-one. -one. 
to the downside. I use this pattern that I call the Chamber Wave Falling Axe Formation. And when it turns down, that's when you can get it. Well, it went almost to the penny of the GDX, and now it's running quite nicely. So I'm not saying gold is not acting uh, well. I'm just saying I'm a little surprised that it isn't as high as it, as it should be, and that even the GDX only have 50 cents, should be up about uh, 78 cents to 92. And it's not. The day he's young, you could still do that. I'll be right back. Dow's down 140. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, hold on to your seat. Get your strap your seatbelts in. We're going to go through this quickly. So GTX, what would, what would make me more bullish on the GTX? And I do I like it. I, in fact, uh, we want to be considered getting it uh, for subscribers even on Friday morning. I haven't got it. I, I like well, I want to see how we close. Because if GTX is holding well, then I think it's going to tell us that gold will follow. Then maybe at some point gold will lead and then, then silver will be doing the same thing. So it's not out of the question. I'm just saying I'm a little surprised it isn't even higher at this particular time. Rig, this is... Uh, Transocean, uh, R-I-G. There we go. Um, I just think it's stuck, and I've been saying that for about a, about a month, or two, month or two, and it's just kind of stuck. It's fabulous, but it's kind of stuck. It's having a high-level consolidation. So uh, where would I look? It mustn't close under 70, and if it can start to close for three days above 842, then 860, and then 880, that's going to be very positive and say or the transocean, the offshore uh, drilling oil and gas is in, in favor again. TLT, 
Um, let's just wait until tomorrow. I need to see TLT if it's able to hit 85 to 80, uh, sorry, 86.50 to 80, 87.90 in the next couple of days. That'll be really good. But right now, it's just it's a nice move up. Next question was uh, PLTR, Palantir. I spoke about this the other day. I said I like the pattern. I like it. It's having a nice move up today. It's up 65 cents, 63 cents, and 17.25. It's gone into the area that I said it needs to get into. That's this candle right here, the Chapman Wave Roman candle of August. I would say um, it, between 17.90 and 18.30, it'll have it should have some resistance, but it's really doing very nicely. Next question was ZS. Uh, ZS is uh, Z Scalar. Very strong move today. This is a leg E in the week chart. This is what you want to be looking at. Up 170. ZS is a symbol. Nice action piece of good customers. Stay tuned for Steve Rose. Check out both the form of daily newsletter and listen to your big break programming here. See you tomorrow.